Hi, ninth graders. This is one of your biology teachers, Mrs. Cuthbertson, and I wanted to give you some information about how you are going to actually sample for microplastics during your upcoming microplastic beach investigation. Now, you are going to learn more about microplastics during advisory. So, this video is just to show you what you're going to do and the equipment that you're going to use. So, first off, to do a microplastic beach investigation, you need to be at a beach. When you get to the beach, you're going to be looking for what's called the rack line. This is the high tide line, and it's where all of the debris that's in the water actually gets deposited by the tides. So let's assume that this is the rack line. We're going to ask you to sample somewhere along the rack line. And each of you will get what we call, it's a known size called a quadrat. So we know the actual area of this quadrat, so all you need to do is place it on the area in which you're going to sample. So now you're ready to sample. But the other thing you need to watch out for are really large pieces of plastic, because those can go into recycling. We don't need them to add to the plastic trash problem in the ocean. Here I am at my quadrat sampling site. I have a little shovel to work with and a bucket. So you're going to pick up about the first centimeter of sand. So you go ahead and collect that first centimeter of sand. Okay, so I've went ahead and I've shoveled up my sand and I have my bucket of sand right here. Now, I want to go ahead and get all of the microplastic pieces out of the sand. Now, microplastic is about five millimeters or less. You can get things a little bit bigger, and some things that are smaller, you just can't see. So what I want to do is I want to filter out the really fine sand particles, stuff that I know is not plastic. So you got to choose a filter. Now, I have a lot of different filters I made. try using this filter right here. So I'm going to start to pour my sand into this bucket. And the little pieces, the little sand particles, will go down. The bigger particles, like the plastics, will stay on top. Also big particles like rocks and whatnot. So wow! I actually have, and I'm going to bring it up to you, a lot of pieces of plastic in there. So let's go ahead and collect it. There's a lot of plastic in here because I actually made this sand so that it was full of microplastics, and I may have overdone it. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and, for my Sample site number one, I want to find my little, what's called a microtube, and I want to go ahead and start picking out pieces that I can actually see. So I can see these pieces, and I'm going to pick them out. So I got a lot of the little plastic pieces. The other things are these bigger, these are pieces of plastic bags, so I don't think they're going to fit into my microtube, so I think I'm going to have to go ahead and just put them, put them into my baggie. There. Woohoo! All right. That was a bumper crop of plastic in that one. Looks like I actually have another piece here. So you may accidentally pick up a piece of shell, and that's okay, because that's what science is. Okay? We're here to observe and figure out what we see. Okay, so I think that I got all of the microplastic out of that one, so I'm going to go ahead and filter it again. And I'm going to try to go ahead and filter this entire amount of sand that I sampled.
I actually put so much plastic in this sample here that I think I'm going to fill up my microtubes. Hopefully that will happen on your beach investigation. But if it does, just go to your advisor teacher and they'll have more microtubes as well as plastic baggies for you to go ahead and put your samples in. Okay, so let's assume I filtered all of my sand. And I've collected my plastic particles into my different little microtubes. So now I want to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and fill this bucket with water and then a lot of the plastic particles are not as dense as water so that means they're going to float. So if I stir it up a little bit I should be able to go ahead and get out any of the plastic particles that are less dense than water and make sure that I get them all. I got my water from the sink over there but you can just use ocean water. So what you want to do is you want to fill it up until you know, the sand is actually covered with a couple inches and then stir it a bit. You can just use your spade to do that, your trowel. There's all kinds of stuff that is floating in my water. I don't want to pick all of that up. I just want to pick out the things that I think are plastic. So. Again, I put a lot of plastic in here, so I have a lot to get out. Hopefully you won't have that much. So, go ahead and start picking those out. It's okay if you pick up things that are not plastic because sometimes it's hard to tell. But you are going to come up with some dirt, some little pieces of wood, twigs, and whatnot. I'm done sampling here at this sample site. Time to pack it up and move on and do another. Yay. Oh yeah, that wet sand that you have, it needs to go back from where you got it from. But now it's microplastic free, so we help the environment. Yay! Okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and analyze and fill out my data table. So first of all, I have my microtubes that are full of microplastics, which can be styrofoam, which is actually polystyrene. It can also be plastic from plastic bags. It can be plastic from almost anything. So I have some of these little tubes that are full of microplastics. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and pour them onto my tray. All right. So let's see what I have here. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Now, you are probably, hopefully, not going to get this much microplastic. Because if you do, that means that the beach is really, really polluted. Like I said, I put way more in than I probably should have. And I made this whole demonstration harder to do because of it. So each of you guys is going to get two data tables because we want you to sample two sites. So we need to go ahead and start filling out our data table. So first, let's go ahead and figure out what types of plastics that we have here. Well, I have dark blue. I have some light blue. I have some polystyrene, some more light blue, some plastic bags, and then like a little piece of, I actually didn't put that in there. So that is something that was there originally. I'm going to go ahead and count these up and then separate them and count them up and figure out how many I have of each different type. Okay, so I kind of separated it out. Again, this hopefully is way more than what you're actually going to find. So I started to fill out my data table. And I'm not going to fill this out completely for you because we want to see what you guys come up with. But I have things like color, shape, size, and for size I put if it was between one to five millimeters or less than one millimeter, so approximate size. 
and then how many of those of that type that I had. Any other characteristics? Go ahead and put that in. And if you think you know what it is, you can go ahead and fill in the identification. Okay, so I've inventoried what I found, and now I want to go ahead and add it up. I want to add up the total number of microplastic pieces that I found. So I have found there's 12, 15, 23, 27, 28 pieces. So 28 pieces in my sample number one. Now, here comes the fun part, total mass in grams. So you guys are also going to get a scale. So to turn the scale on, you just hit the on button. I do what's called tearing it out, which makes it read zero before you put anything on it. So I'm Okay, so the total grams is 0.4. Yours could be anywhere around that. Honestly, it, it, we don't know. We really don't know. No one's ever studied this before. The last thing that you might get to use if you want to see what your plastic looks like are these field microscopes. So these are designed to look at items in the field. So they're pretty hardy and they can handle a lot, but we don't want to get them in the sand or get them too wet. Okay, so let me show you how to use it. So this bottom part comes off and there's a place here for your sample to go. So you can place your plastic sample there and then put this back on top. Okay sample back in. So this button up here turns the light on and then what you can do is you can use this to start to bring it into focus. This would be like the rough adjustment and then this one up here would be like the fine adjustment and you can actually look at your plastic like you're looking at a microscope. Wow. That is cool. Make sure that all of your samples, that you get them back in your plastic bag, that your name is on your sampling sheet and that you went ahead and filled it out. And then you can go ahead and fold it up. And voila, ready to go. Oh yeah, don't forget to turn everything off and clean it up. Scale, turn it off. Microscope, turn it off. So overall, that's what we're going to do. Uh, kind of sounds like it's a lot right now. Um, in the end, the main thing is, is that we have a bunch of samples that we can actually look at and figure out exactly how much microplastic might actually exist on the beach that we're at. And then we can even publish those results. So I'm really excited about this and I hope you guys are too. So I will see you on the EE trip and stay calm. This is going to be awesome. Bye.